everybody we're ready to get started i just want to make sure look all right guys i'm going to shut this line i think you guys are all lined up in the in the chat so let's go ahead and get started with questions for coach hey tim jeremy warner from 24 7 sports welcome uh to champagne but uh, just wondering how did, how did this all go down for you because it felt like you kind of had the, the plan to keep doing the training thing, but uh, what drew you to Illinois and, and how to kind of all go down? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, um, when initially when, you know, I, I wanted to stay at DePaul, um, um, you know, I was going through the process and I had some things going on outside of the community center, I had some things going on, uh, you know, where I came from and I wanted to continue to build on that and then get my training um, business back up and going and, you know, um, and, and, and to do some things with that had a few opportunities that came by. Um, and uh, when I got a call and when I talked to Coach Underwood, it was uh, it was just an opportunity that I knew that would be a great fit for me, an opportunity to be with a guy who's won everywhere he's been, um, who has a culture and a um, and, and chance for me to grow and to, you know, and to ultimately, you know, be a head coach. Brad talks a lot about your development ability, Tim. Uh, what goes into developing talent like Illinois has done, like you have done before, and, and like you've done with some NBA guys, like what's the most important part of that process? I think uh, one of the biggest things, um, you know, I think, you know, every staff or anybody can, you know, throw guys out there and train and, you know, and put them through some drills. I think one of the biggest things that um, I've had success with, uh, with doing is training the mind, training a, a process, a thought process, and, 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 and having them get more confidence in doing certain things and just, have an approach um, that that's probably one of the biggest things for me and just being really, really detailed and, um, and just trying to create and I always tell the guys that we were playing cards and we were playing spades and you got five cards in your hand and what is, what is your ace? What is your go-to? And if it's the defender, if it's shot making, if it's playmaking, if it's rebounding, whatever, you have to have an ace to be able to be effective. And we got to make that, you know, you know, you know, something that you can do at the high level and, and, and be able to, um, you know, that push come to shove. That's what you do when you're on the court when, you know, so. Thanks, Tim. Hey, Tim, uh, Scott Ritchie from the News Gazette. Nice to meet you virtually, uh, at least. Uh, I guess to kind of follow up with that, how, how do you feel like, man, you've been able to be successful on the player development side and maybe getting guys to, take that mindset and, you know, turn that into, you know, getting better on the court. I just, you know, it all started with, you know, and, and, and it's just the grind, the grind, the, the, the grind is not going to cheat anybody. And I think the amount of work you put in and, and the amount of, of love that you have behind it, it'll, 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 it'll bring the success, but, you know, having those guys like Derrick Rose, Jabari and Anthony Davis, and you know, uh, uh, McDermott and you know just just a Bobby Porter just a whole list of guys that will vouch for me and and this has a relationship with me and and understands the process and the work that we put in and just build it you know um and and you know I can't I mean I'm trying to explain to you, you know some of the things we do but it's just really really repetition and just training the mind and to understand what we're trying to do and I think that was one of the bigger things that you know um I was able to do when I was at DePaul, you know, helping develop those guys and, and, you know, ultimately having guys that was able to go on and play at the highest level. We didn't, you know, win as much, but we had guys that was able to play, you know, in the NBA and, you know, overseas and et cetera, because of the amount of work they put in and, 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 you know, just trusting the process. I know you've only had a, a couple of days, you know, to work with the, the players here, but what's kind of been your first impressions about the, the roster and maybe the guys you're going to get a chance to work with here? Uh, really, 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 really talented, um, cl close uh, group, um, like really, really tight knit. Um, they get on each other. They police each other. They laugh. Um, you know, I haven't been in the, in the gym with this amount of talent um, and uh, they work. They work. I was just surprised to see, you know, the first few days, um, you know, I stick around the office and trying to get my routine and stuff like that. And, you know, guys are coming back on their own, just getting shots up like the whole team you know, my first two days and, um, you know, and, and, you know, and that was just a little bit different because we was just used to calling guys, getting the gym or, Hey, you free, you want to do this, but these guys come in here and they get extra lifts in, they get extra shots up, they get extra reps up. And I, and it's just all a part of, I think the culture that's been created here. Thank you. 
Hey, Coach, I'm, I'm curious of your uh, kind of history. You know, you grew up in Chicago. You were at Crane. Uh, what was your view of the Illinois program back then? You know, I know you, you played with, with Will Bynum, and he was getting recruited nationally. What was what was your right. view of the Illinois program? Right. Oh, uh, so, you know, I was a guy that grew up watching Channel 26, going back to Kiwan Garris and Corey Bradford and Frank Williams and, you know, all of Brian Cook and Matt Helmet. I, I mean, I just Lucas Johnson. I remember all those guys. So I'm, 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 you know, pretty, pretty much in tune with the culture here, with, with Coach Collins. Was able to do Coach Hanson, Coach Sell, you know, all those guys that was able to, you know, bring success and continue to represent the eye the right way. I mean, I, you know, we didn't have cable, so it was either, you know, um, where I grew up. So you, you have certain channels, and you know, channel, channel 26 was a channel that we had. And, you know, I grew up watching Kiwan Garris. I would we were number 22 because of him. And um, and uh, he's uh, he's one of the guys that, you know, also D Brown is like a little brother to me, Luther Head, we grew up together. So I've, you know, been really, really, you know, watching this program grow. And then when I was able to meet Brad a little while ago when he first got the job, um, you know, I just, you know, I, when, my, when I'm at DePaul, I'm always watching Illinois to see how those guys are doing, you know, also from a competitive standpoint, because, you know, they're the state school, we're the city school. So, you know, you got to kind of keep up with what's going on, but also just watching how he was able to build it here and to turn it around and get it going. But I've always, um, you know, uh, had had a spot for the university. This is like a dream job for me. Um, you know, and like I said, watching those guys, Sergio McLean, all those guys, I, I know a lot of the history here. So I'm just happy to be excited. I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. And then you mentioned Luther. I believe at least for one year you coached his little brother, right? Is that correct? Right, like, right, you were right. Old, I think even when he committed to Illinois. So right. um, can you maybe explain those days and, and what it was like, you know, having a player recruited here and all that kind of thing? So, you know, in this basketball, it's all about relate. Pretty much any job, you know, um, is all about relationships. And you know, uh, me and Luther kind of grew up together. And then, you know, and, and uh, me, Will Bynum, Tony Allen, we all played on the same team. So um, when you know, uh, when I was recruiting Crandall, and um, or or when Illinois was recruiting Crandall, and then Ill and um, you know, uh, Crandall came to uh, Crane. It was, I mean, Luther. I mean. I mean, Luther bleeds this. He's fighting the line out to, you know, in his heart. So this is something he wanted to see. And it was just part of the process of getting him here and, and just doing my part and trying to help him get him better. You know, and you know how it is. And I think Jarence was here at that time. Jarence was recruiting Crandall. Um, so I got a chance to build a relationship with Jarence. So, I mean, it was just, it was just, it was the best fit, but it was also relationships. That's how recruiting is. Thanks. Hey, Coach Alec Bussey, Orange and Blue News. Nice to meet you. You spoke a lot there about your connections to Chicago and all the different people. Having coached in that area and understanding the city the way you do, how important is it for the Illini to not only recruit players from that city, but sign players from that city? So, and, and that's that's one of the things, and I think, um, and you know, you guys know Brad and you dealt with him a lot. He's a straightforward uh, type of guy. And, and that's what I like about him, you know, um, I, you know, when I talked about, I just, I don't feel like I'm just a Chicago guy. Of course, that's my heart, my heart and soul. I've been able to get stuff done, you know, throughout the country, but it's more so the fit and what we're trying to do here and continue to build this culture. And then we got to have the guys that continue to be the keepers of the culture. So that's really, really important. Of course, we're going to recruit Chicago. I mean, um, that's, that's, that's home for me, but it has to be the right fit. It has to be the right person that's going to come in here you know whether it's Chicago was Peoria, whether it's Orlando, you know, and it, of course it's just my task maybe to recruit Chicago, but Jeff has some strong relationships throughout the state and just as a bulldog, he knows everybody. So, and, and I think that's the approach we take anyway. We kind of all work together and I might be the lead here. He might be the lead there, but, you know, I'm not trying to sidestep your question, but you know, the, the, the biggest thing for us is the fit. And of course, you know, I'm here, and um and I'm from Chicago and I have a lot of relationships in Chicago, but it's it's not just a, you know we got to get Chicago guys. It has to be the right guy that fits our culture that can grow and that we can continue to you know help that young man maximize his stuff, his 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 ability, and we win. 
So you have connections to mean streets and you've mentioned that, but there's also, you know, the Mac Urban Fire, Illinois Wolves that are all based in that same kind of area. You've actually been successful landing kids from different organizations. How'd you go about building those relationships and keeping those into the future, I guess? Right. So I, I think one of the, one of the cliches when people think like, Hey, okay, he's a fire guy. You know, he's a main streets guy. He's a wolf guy. But I, of course I'm from main streets and that's my heart and soul. I'm not ducking it. You know, that's my program and I support him to this day, whatever I can do, you know, far as, you know, helping him and doing the things the right way I'm with it. Um, but I've, I've been able to recruit Charlie Moore from, from, you know, Mac urban fire. I had Terrence Shannon committed from Mac urban fire. Uh, Marquise Jacobs was a was a Mac Urban Fire kid, so those relationships are are pure relationships, and necessarily I, I knew I know families throughout the city and throughout the state, and even if I didn't know somebody directly, I had somebody who knew them that can get me in there, and um and the same thing with the Wolves, you know we have relationships throughout the D Rose, the Demons, there's a lot of impactful AAU programs that we have real relationships that. When I was on the ground, when I was a high school coach, I was building those relationships with people. And so, and of course, you know, try to say, hey, you choose a side, but no, I'm, 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 I'm here and I'm trying to do the best thing for these kids. And I think a lot of people understand that, you know. And then if I could get one more, with all of your training experience of preparing kids for the NBA, you mentioned Anthony Davis is one. Do you have a position group or area that you're more confident or more, I guess, comfortable coaching and developing talent wise at this point in your career are you kind of comfortable going wherever you're needed to go um you know the 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 the, the benefit i've had and one of the best things is that you know being a trainer you have to train bigs wings guards so i'm i'm pretty aversive of dealing with you know uh any of them and, and you know honestly i love working with bigs i'm a point guard uh, but I also love working with point guards, wings as well. So it really doesn't matter. And then as far as the, the demographic with the staff, we're still figuring that part out. We all kind of kind of rotate and figure out, uh, you know, day-to-day -day basis. We, we go on our guys to work with each other. So um, I'm, I'm comfortable with any of them. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, so been, I've been doing skill development for so long. I can, you know, get it cracking with any, any, any of them. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Tim Joey Wagner with 24-7 Sports. Uh, Brad mentioned that you guys really kind of knew each other when he took this job. I, I guess, when did it become clear to you that, that this was an opportunity for you? And and did you think, like, if that ever comes open, you know, that's something I would I would be interested in, just given Illinois and given Brad? Um, yeah, we did. We did. We sat down with Brad when Brad first got the job, and uh, he, was, he was straightforward, you know, and I was looking at Brad like, uh, you walking into something I don't understand, and, but he, and, and you know, and, and knowing him, and and I see why he's like he is, and he's ha he's been able to have success as he's had because this is his mindset. This is how we're doing it. This is what we're gonna do. We're not catering to this. We're not catering to that. So I kind of respected that, but I was a little thrown off. You know what I'm saying? He's really really confident, uh, and he's he has a great personality too. You know, you think of this big guys like you know, but he's really a funny dude. But when he's on the court, he just turns into a whole different type of guy. And uh, but you know, honestly, I I would I, I would be you know wouldn't be wouldn't be truthful if I say that I haven't been eyeing the opportunity to be able to be a part of his staff. Um, and like I said, when an opportunity came, it was just something that I would because I was I was willing to take a year or two off for probably even not even being a game to because it's some things that I had going on in the community that I want to be in the forefront of and to 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 help and to curb the violence and stuff like that. So that's really near and dear to me. So if I have to sacrifice for me not being able to, you know, be a be a college coach or ultimately be a head coach, you know, that, that was fine. I was really I was ready to make that sacrifice. But um you know, when, when the opportunity came when you know, and, 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 and a lot of people look at it like, Oh, what's going on in Illinois? They lost all their coaches. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I look on the other side, Hey, you, you have success. That's what happens. You have an opportunity to grow. You have an opportunity to, 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 to get better and you have more opportunities. That's how it goes. Um, and, and that's what Brad has been able to do here. You know, he's had some successful years and, you know, Chen, O and Gentry was able to, to, to go in and, and, and what they feel like is a best situation or better situation for them. I feel like this is the best situation for me. And, and like I told Brad, I, um, 
I don't, I don't want to leave here and be an assistant. I want to leave here and be a head coach. So my next stop is not to be an assistant at Duke or Kentucky or North Carolina, nowhere. I want to be here. I want to learn as much as possible. I want to win. I want to do my part. I want to go above and beyond for these kids. And when I leave here, I don't want to be an assistant. So I want to be a head coach. And forgive me for asking, but you mentioned some of the things in the community that matter a lot to you. Can you maybe shed some light on what those are and what you know you were involved with in that part of your life away from basketball? So, um, you know, violence is, I, I, I would kind of say it's at all time high, but I kind of really think it's the same, but I think social media just sheds a different light on it now and people having cell phones and being able to, you know, videotape and, and see things right away. Um, the, the violence where, where I'm from is, is really is, is ramping up. And, uh, and I've never ever wanted to like leave the hood where I'm from. I always wanted to make the hood a better place. So for me being integral and vocal in the community and creating job opportunities for, for, uh, for the people in the neighborhood has been really, really, you know, um, near and dear to me. And, uh, and, and it's a lot of different things that goes into violence. People just don't wake up thinking about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something bad today. It's homelessness, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's jobs, it's lack of job training. It's a lot of different things that go into it and uh, mental health. There's so many different, you know, entities that go into it that, you know, people don't really understand. So just being able to, so I have a violence prevention program in Chicago that I was heading that I want to, you know, continue to push for because, you know, you, you can't, you maybe not be able to change, you know, the whole structure, but if you can, you know, give people an opportunity and, and give them, you know, a, a different outlet, you know, maybe they'll, you know, try to do right. So one more, if I could, what, I mean, that obviously means a lot to you. What, what was the, the balance of, of weighing your passion for that, but also looking at an opportunity at, at a program you grew up watching? How did, what was kind of the tipping point to say, you know, I can either manage both or this is the right time to, to get back into this coaching realm? The, uh, and, you know, just talking with my family and, and, you know, my wife and, and just, um, you know, she wanted me to be be a little selfish, you know, try to, you know, and, and then she very rarely gets involved with that. And, and she told me, hey, look, this is some, that's an opportunity that I don't think you would, because for, for me, this is, this is Illinois is the blue blood. And I understand, I know how the media is. I know how the fan base is. I know how the alumni, you know, you guys expect to win. <laughs> and and there's, there's no question. And it's like, and, and, I, and I told my wife, just how Duke feel about their athletics, Illinois feel the same way. So it's not it's not going to be a walk in the park. It's going to be hard. It's some stuff they want to do, but it's an opportunity that I feel like I couldn't pass. I don't feel like that this opportunity would have been awarded to me no other time. I feel like this was the best time and the best timing of it. And it's, this is, you know, just especially where the program's at with Brad and the guys here, Bello and Frazier and Big Fella and you know, working with 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 uh with Jeff and Chester and these guys, Joy Biggs, these like like Fletch, like these guys are phenomenal. So now, you know, this is an opportunity. I just feel like I had to do, and then the, hopefully the other structures in place that we already put in place with the violence prevention piece that'll continue to push forward. Um, but this just being a part of the Illini Nation and and at this time is is something that I couldn't pass. Like this is one of the top ten programs in the country. Thank you for sharing that, Tim. Nice to meet you. Tim, I'm Rob McCauley. I, I provide most of the coverage for the local public radio affiliate. And uh, so far, you seem very low key. I'd, I'd sort of like to know how your recruiting philosophy goes, how you sold yourself to Brad, if indeed you did, while you were eyeing the opportunity. Well, um, <laughs> you know, re recruiting is about relationships. and. Uh, and, and, you know, being, being an AAU coach, being a high school coach, being a trainer, you know, uh, working with Main Streets, you develop a lot of relationships throughout the city, throughout the country. You know, being on, a, being on a circuit, you develop relationships with different, you know, organizations from, you know, Boo Wim to Howard Pulley to PSA to Each One Teach One to all, you know, to different, you know, uh, the family. So you you develop these relationships with these guys and then, um, and you just try to, just try to, 
I just try to stay out the way and just try to work my relationships and continue to build in, 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 in that way. But, um, you know, uh, I mean, Brad knows, you know, Brad knows. He, he, he may act like he don't know. He knows what's going on. He's going to do his research. He knows, you know, if I can get it done or if I can't get it done. And I think, you know, of course, you know, I'm expected to recruit at a high level. Like I'm, I'm with it. Like I'm, we're going to get that done. Like that's having an eye behind me is way, way easier than having the DePaul, you know, and it was, it was, and we had two top 25 recruiting classes there, you know, um, a top 25 class and a top 10 recruiting class at DePaul. And it was way harder, you know, um, and, and just, you know, recruiting at DePaul and um, being, being the last team in the Big East for almost 15 years, dealing with NCAA, uh, you know, on probation, um, you know, and, 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 and it's like, and now you got to go out and get the best player you can possibly get. So it was really, really hard. So I think having the car stacked against you there, but, you know, coming in with momentum here is, is a little bit, you know, easier, but, you know, the recruiting piece, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. The player development piece, I'm not worried about that. I'm really confident. I'm just, I'm just, I'm humble, uh, but I'm really confident in what I do. Um, far as that, because that's something that I really, really work my butt off to, you know, to to continue to get better at and evolve. He says he doesn't remember exactly when he met you. Do you remember exactly when you met him? Who is this, Brad? Brad Underwood. Yeah, I met Brad um, when he first got the job. When he first got the job, because I was um, so um, I was a director of Main Streets when 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 Brad first got the job. Uh, so we, we met and, you know, I wanted to get a feel for him because, you know, Brad was trying to do things the right way. He met with me, Mike Irvin, uh, Mullins. He met with all, you know, the major guys in Chicago, you know, and, and, uh, and just to share his vision, to see what he, what he's going to do and, you know, how he wanted to move around. So I remember that. And then at that point I had no, um, uh, I had no, I, I didn't want to get back into college. So I did the Texas Pan American thing. And I was like, Ugh, I don't know if I want to be a coach again. So I wasn't even trying to be a coach at that point. I was really good doing what we were doing with Main Streets. And then um, and I, then I think Coach Lato started talking to me a little bit later because I turned down a few jobs then. And I just just being home and being at DePaul, and that was, that was a, a great opportunity for me at that time. But I had no inclination to even get back into college when we were um, – when I first met Brad, it was just, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here, you know, what is your thoughts? You know, I want to have a relationship with you guys. And it was kind of that thing. Last one for me, uh, you said your next stop is going to be a head coaching position. Do you have any dream job in that capacity? Uh, we all do, you know, I, you know, I, I mean, I, of course, we all got, you know, the, the, the biggest thing for me, honestly, and uh, and I don't want you guys to take it the wrong way. Of course, I want to be a head coach. I mean, that's why, you know, most assistants do it. But I want to be in this moment, you know, while I'm here now and to learn as much as I can from Brad and the rest of these guys. Like today was the first day, you know, me being on the floor with him. He's so detailed with little bitty things that you wouldn't even think about. But I just want to learn as much as I can. I want to be in this moment, but yeah, ultimately I do want to be a head coach. And then when those opportunities come, we'll just, we'll go through those, but I just want to be here where I'm at now and, and just be the best version of myself for the program that I can be. It's an excellent answer. Thank you, Tim. Good to meet you. All right. Hey Tim, good to meet you. Scott Beatty, WDWS radio. Uh, first of all, a bit envious. You've got a great beard game going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's making Robert jealous. I can tell. You. <laughs> um, even if things are cooking at DePaul, you know, DePaul's kind of place. It's always going to be fighting for uh, a piece of the media coverage in, in a big city like Chicago. Um, what do you think about you know moving from the city, the environment you know and love, into a place like Champaign Urbana, but uh, Illinois basketball, you, you mentioned it before. Um, you're almost under a microscope now as an assistant coach. Right, right. Um, I, the, 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 the biggest thing I think um, is, is here is, is just the transition. But, but for me, it's about growing, um, of course. And, uh, and like I tell the guys all the time, I mean, you got to get uncomfortable being uncomfortable. You got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And, um, you know, I haven't 
been out of the city in a long time, but in, in order for me to grow and to maximize, you know, uh, what, what, what I'm trying to do and what we need to do, I need to get uncomfortable. I need to get out of my comfort zone. I need to do things I need to, you know, to, to move around and, 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 and grow. So sometimes growth is uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm fine with that, but the media, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've watched you guys. I've saw some things. I don't, I don't have a big social media presence. I still only have Facebook um, because I had Facebook when I was back in college in 2000. So I don't even have an Instagram or none of that. But, you know, I, by me watching, you know, certain guys commit or recruiting, you know, I've seen some of the things you guys do or say, and it's like, this is this is huge. And I, and I understand that. I understand, you know, with me too, fellas, uh, 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 a pat on the back and a kick in the butt is six inches apart. So we can we can have a great conversation about a great get, and then and if we miss out on somebody, I can be the same person and say, "Hey Tim, why you you know you didn't get that done?" So I understand that you know there's no hard feelings there. I understand you guys got to do your job, but you know for me, I just look at it as an opportunity to grow because this is making me be the best version of myself, and, and that's all I want to do. I just want to be the best person I can be. You share a bit about. I, I saw a line in your bio here that you began your career in law enforcement. <laughs> what was that about? And, and you know, so back in back in basketball. So right. So um, so when I started, I started off at my old school, uh, Oklahoma Panhandle State. When I when I graduated from there, so um, the assistant coaching position didn't pay a lot of money. So I was the president of the university, like really, really loved me, Dr. Bryant, like, and I still talk to him to this day. And, um, and he's like, Tim, you want to be a cop? So, and I was like, well, in my mind, I've always thought about it because when I was little, you know, my mom, I just remember clear as day, I have me walking and I'll go by the police and she'll tell me, you know, hey, you better be good before the police get you. And I was like, what are they going to get me for? I ain't did nothing bad. But, and, and I'm going to tell you some, some stories that I've learned that is different from being a police and, and anywhere else than being a police in Chicago. So, you know, I used to always see police just run lights and just just run lights. So I yeah, I tried to do that at where, where I was in Texas, Texas County. And then I got a little ticket in my mailbox. And I'm like, who I get a ticket for? I thought we could just run the lights if we want to run the lights. Like, so the citizens gave me a ticket. So um, I pull up in front of the police station. I park on the wrong side of the street. I get another ticket and I see the police do it all the time in Chicago. So, and they, they hurry up and show me that, Hey, this is not, no, no, no. We're going to do stuff the right way down here. So I was able to learn that really, really quickly. But um, you know, the, the law enforcement thing was for me. So when you guys continue to be around me and talk to me, talk, talk to me, like I want to try to make a difference. Like I don't want, I never wanted people to look at the police and be scared of the police. Like I wanted people to have a relationship with the police because that's their job to serve and protect. And, you know, and to, and, and, and the way I grew up, it was police that was policemen that was 60 years old that I, that I knew and I talked to, to this day. Um, and I wasn't scared of them because I wasn't doing anything wrong, but the perception is so bad now. And I want to kind of change that perception of how people look at police. Like, I don't want to be like, oh, you see the police and you get scared, you know, like, oh, if you're not doing anything, you shouldn't be scared, you know? So that was pretty much, I tried to do that for a little bit, but my, um, my aunt, so my aunt raised me and she died because I was going to stay there. And then my granny was six, uh, and then I ended up coming back home and, and helping them out, and and you know getting the family, you know, trying to trying to do my part there. But I was, yeah, I was I was going to do the law enforcement thing. Well, thanks for giving us a little window into that. I appreciate those stories. Yeah. Hey Tim, uh, this is Kelly Prince with the um, with the Line Eye guys and Quad City Times. Uh, I guess my first question is, you know, being from Chicago. What is the perception from the high school coach of Illinois? I mean, there's been some kids that got away and some, but what really is the perception up there in the city as far as the state university is concerned? Um, I think I think the the university got has a lot of momentum now. Um, and and just, and some of the times, you know, the, most it doesn't be like you would perceive it like, hey, we, we might missed on a guy that everybody thought we should have took or everybody thought we should have got. 
but internally we probably didn't even want the kid for real to be a part of what we were trying to do but it just looks like oh we should have got him because he's a five star he's a four star he's the number one player in the state but our job is to dissect that whole process that whole thing what type of kid he is off the court on the court what type of people's around him um what is he trying to do what's his work ethic and you know and, and all those other things and those other qualities might not fit what we're trying to do but um to get back into your question and, and of course uh you know you got guys like you know that came from the city and and and, and they're just real real proud of the u of i uh so i think you know um Chin had a really good relationship with guys in the city. I think I have a pretty good relationship with guys in the city. I think it's all about relationships. I think it's all about relationships, putting it, you know, with someone that you can trust, someone that you know that's going to do the right thing by the kids. And I think that's what it really is about. And I think I think it's really exciting times around Chicago right now for the U of I. Okay, last question really quick. You mentioned Illinois being a blue blood and, you know, I, you broke. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I said you mentioned Illinois being a, a blue blood school. Like the people expect to win here, and there's a lot of people here in this in this Zoom. You know, when the fans hear that, you think that this is a blue blood school or could be. I mean, what are your realistic expectations at Illinois? Well, we 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 expect to win. When I talk to Brad, Brad wants to win championships. He wants to win. We want to win every day. This culture is about winning and it's about developing young men. That's what it's about. Being the best person, best player you can be for your teammate and to, and to, and to win. Like Brad wants to win championships. He wants to win a national championship. He said every day. And, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're not, we're not trying to just win 10 games or win the big 10. We're, we're trying to win national championships. And that's how we feel here. Thank you. Hey, Tim, James Boyd here with the Herald and Review. Um, I want to ask, what is the name of your violence prevention program and how do you still uh, plan to ha have a hand in that or, or be a figure in that, you know, although you'll be down here in Champaign? Well, it's called, it's called the RAIN Project. And, um, and